Hello everyone, this is Orhan. In this video, I'm going to continue our risk and rates of return discussion. As you might remember in the previous video, I talked about single stock rate of return and risk. And I will spare this video for the portfolio context discussion. Let's first define what a portfolio is. Portfolios are groups of assets such as stocks and bonds that are held by investors. As there are more than one stocks in a portfolio, one convenient way to describe a portfolio is by listing the proportion of total value of the portfolio that is invested into each asset. And this is called a portfolio weight. A portfolio weight is percentage of the total value of the portfolio invested in each stock. Well, the expected return on a portfolio is a linear combination or weighted average of the expected returns on the assets in that portfolio. Okay, There are more than one assets in a portfolio, and every single weight is a percentage of the total value of the portfolio invested in each stock. Assume, for example, that I have a portfolio of two assets, and the expected return of that portfolio is going to be the first weight times the expected return of the first asset plus second weight times the expected return of the second asset. Okay, to illustrate this in a simple example, assume that we have a portfolio of two stocks, which is created with $30,000 invested in Microsoft and $20,000 invested in IBM. In this question, I'm just going to calculate the weights of each stock. Okay, the first weight, which belongs to Microsoft, is the amount invested in Microsoft divided by total value. I calculate $50,000 by just adding up those two numbers. Okay, so the weight of Microsoft is going to be $30,000 divided by $50,000, which is 60%. And the weight of IBM is going to be equal to the total amount of money invested in IBM divided by the total value of the portfolio, which gives 40%. Make sure that the total value of all weights must add up to one. Okay, so in this case, 60% plus 40% must add up to one, which is exactly the case. Okay, let's go back to our, our star sense and the J pot example. Remember that the expected return of star sense was 25%, and expected return of J pot was 20%. Now, what would be the expected return of an equal weighted portfolio, meaning that every single stock has an equal weight? Since I have two stocks only, the weight is going to be 50-50. Uh, okay, so the expected return of the portfolio is going to be the first weight times, which is star sense, times star sense return, okay? Plus the second weight, which is 50% again, times the second expected return. So when you add up those numbers, you would get 22.5%. And this will be the expected return of that, port that portfolio. Please be aware that expected return of the portfolio must be somewhere between the expected return of individual stocks. For example, in this case, expected return of the J pot is 20%, and expected return of star science is 25%. Expected return of the portfolio must be somewhere between those two numbers, depending on the weight. Since it is equal weighted, it is just exactly in the middle. So it's 22.5%. If the weight of the star sense was higher, then the expected return of the portfolio would be closer to star sense. If the weight of the J pod was higher, then the return of the portfolio would move to the left. Where there is return, there must be a risk, of course. Now, let's see how to calculate the risk of a portfolio. Well, you might see the formula very ugly, uh, but let's start with the formula first. The risk of a portfolio, which is standard deviation, is equal to the square root of summation of three terms. First term, second term, and the third term. The first term is weight of the first asset squared times its variance. Second term is equal to weight of the second asset squared times its variance. And the third term is equal to two times the first weight times the second weight times the correlation coefficient between those two assets, the first standard deviation, not variance, make sure this is not squared, and the second standard deviation. So when you add up to all those numbers and then square it, you'll get the risk of a portfolio. There is something to note here, and that is the correlation coefficient. 
Correlation coefficient, as you might remember, is a statistical measure of the strength of the relationship between relative movements of two variables or two assets. And it's a number between one and negative one. So the closer it is to one, it is the stronger the positive relationship between those two assets. And the closer it is to negative one, the stronger the negative relationship between those two assets. So if you make this calculation, you will get the, you will get the standard deviation of a portfolio. Standard deviation of a portfolio is approximately 35% for a portfolio of average stocks. And most stocks are positively correlated, meaning that the correlation coefficient rho is somewhere between zero and one. It's not negative. So generally, combining stocks in a portfolio lowers the risk, which I will show in a moment. So let me illustrate this uh, idea with an example. Let's remember the stars and J-Party example once again. We already calculated their standard deviation as 12.51% and 10% respectively. Now, let's form a portfolio with equal weights, meaning that the weight of the star signs is going to be 50%, and the weight of the J part is also 50%. Now, let's calculate the standard deviation of this portfolio. This is the formula. Now, I'm going to substitute every single number in this formula, okay? The first weight squared times standard deviation of the star sign squared. So it is 12.51 squared. Now let's move to the second variable. Second variable is j -pop. So j -pop's weight is also 0.5% squared. Now it is standard deviation is 10%, 10% squared. Now two times first weight times second weight times the correlation, which I will not put anything right now, times the first standard deviation times the second standard deviation. So the only missing number in this equation is the correlation coefficient, which I did it on purpose. Now I'm going to put different numbers here for the correlation coefficient, and I, I will show you the result. Now let's assume that the correlation coefficient between those two stocks, stars and j part is positive one, which means that they are highly positively correlated. Whenever one moves up, the other one moves up. Whenever one moves down, the other one moves down. So they are perfectly correlated. If I put one here, the risk of the portfolio is going to be 11.3%, which is somewhere between the standard deviation of the first stack and the standard deviation of the second stack. So it's, it's, it's exactly somewhere in between. Now let's assume that the correlation coefficient here is 0.5. Now the risk of the portfolio went down to 9.8%, which is lower than each of these individual risks. Now, even furthermore, if the correlation coefficient is zero, the risk of the portfolio is 8%, even lower. And if the correlation coefficient is negative one, it is 1.3%, which is far lower than the lowest risk in the portfolio. Bottom line is this, the lower the correlation, the lower the risk of the portfolio. Now let's cover a more illustrative example. In this example, I have two stocks, stock A, which is represented by blue line to the right, and stock B, which is represented by the orange line in the graph to the left. Now I'm going to construct an equal weighted portfolio. By the way, you can find this Excel sheet on Google Drive, whose link is given below the video. You can copy that sheet and paste it to a proper Excel sheet so that you can replicate the exercise. Now I'm going to click on column D and write here 0.5 times first asset plus 0.5 times second asset. This 0.5 represents an equal weight. So I'm going to add 50% of stock A and 50% of stock B. So that's why the column D is going to show me the return on my portfolio. When I hit enter, I will see 15%. So when you drag and drop, you are going to see that magically, the return on my portfolio is 15% for every single month, just because each of the stocks they move in the opposite direction. So that's why their correlation is negative one. I calculate the correlation here. Correlation is calculated by the corral command. Corral, you select the first column, and then you select the second column, it shows you the correlation, which is negative one. So it is the extreme most negative correlation that we can have. So they are negatively correlated, which means that they, they move in the opposite direction all the time. 
Now let's calculate the average of my portfolio. So the average return on my portfolio, it's going to be, I'm going to select all of those columns. It's going to be 15% too. So the average return of stock A, 15%. The average return of stock B is 15%. The average return on my portfolio is again 15%. Now we have the standard deviation of stock A as 25% and standard deviation of stock P is 25%. Now I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of my portfolio. So I'm going to write STDEV and select the portfolio and close the parenthesis. And as you can see, it is 0%. We literally eliminated the risk. This can be seen by looking at the chart, which has three lines, stock A, stock B, and the portfolio. The red line on the graph represents the portfolio. As you can see, it's a straight line which does not have up and down movements showing that the standard deviation and the risk is literally zero. So this example show us two things. The first one is a portfolio of two very low correlated stocks might have a risk which is lower than individual stocks risk. In this example, the risk of my portfolio is lower than individual stocks. And the second thing is you can literally eliminate the risk. So in this example, for my portfolio does not have any risk at all. So the risk is zero, which means that your return is always fixed. It doesn't change at all. Now, this is another example. In this example, I have stock A and stock B, which move in the same direction. That's why the correlation is positive one, which means that they always move in the same direction. Now I'm going to construct a portfolio, which is again going to be equally weighted. So I'm going to write here equal 0.5 times the return of the first asset plus 0.5 times the return of the second asset, equally weighted portfolio. I'm going to drag and drop. So the, the red line represents the portfolio return. And I'm going to calculate the average of uh, my portfolio return. As you can see, it's all, it is always somewhere between the individual stocks expected return. And now I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio, which calculates the risk. And as you can see, it is going to be somewhere in between in the individual risks of the assets. It's not even lower than uh, individual stocks, just because the correlation is high. A portfolio of highly correlated stocks it ensures that the risk of your portfolio is going to be somewhere between the risk of individual stocks. So bottom line is this, the lower the correlation between individual stocks, the lower the risk of the portfolio. Well, that's all about portfolio risk and return. As I said before, you can find the Excel files in the link below the video and hope to see you in the next videos.